All right, welcome to another episode of Graffiti Manga. Eyes will hear, ears will see. I have with me tonight, this evening, I have Tito of All Day Hustling Dollars, ADHD. Yes, a, yes. It's been a minute since uh, I am uh, uh, spoke with Tito. Tito, I go go a little ways back, and I'm glad that we was able to reconnect. Um, he's doing, you know, he's doing big things, and he's uh, all day hustling. And you know, the good thing, ever since I've known Tito, he's been hustling. He's been on his grind, and uh, that's kind of <laughs> what we're doing here with Graffiti Manga. You know, part of part of the grind here is about comic books, and uh, but. Since we we got Tito on here, I want to I'm a, I'm gonna get him to tell us a little bit about all day hustling, and then we're gonna do a little bit of a little little segment on some comics. All right, Tito, can you okay. tell us a little bit about uh all day hustling dollars? Oh yes, no doubt, all day hustling dollars. Um, I started all day hustling dollars back in 2016, so we've been in for a little bit. It was just an idea, a movement, kind of. Um, I'm in the mental health field. And um, I was working in the school system and I had uh, some kids, I was mostly counseling kids with ADHD, schizophrenia, bipolarism, uh, ODD, things of that nature. And um, some of them didn't like the stigma. Even some of them used to call me like, you know, bro or cousin, that's my uncle or that's my mama friend or whatever. They didn't really want to say, yo, that's my counselor, that's my therapist, or I got these issues, or that issues. So I just started thinking of like the ADHD that was very prevalent through all, you know, they was actually kind of like giving the kids ADHD for any behavioral issues. It was just automatic ADHD. So to decrease the stigma of it, I came up with all day hustling dollars because I have a hint of ADHD myself, but you know, so I started telling the kids, I'm like, yeah, you might got ADHD, but you might got you all day hustling dollars. You know what I mean? So, and I came up with it because based on, I have, you know, my attention and focus, I have to try to stay focused on things and um, stay attentive. And um, one thing I can always stay focused on is hustling, though. Yeah. I can always stay focused on hustling and getting some dollars. So it became all day hustling dollars out of ADHD, you know okay. what I mean? So it was kind of spin on words, play on, and it's just been a movement. Then from the movement, I started just, you know, doing a little clothing line with it. it got it, you know, our website, www.alldayhustlingdollars.com. Okay. Got a movement. Um, just trying to push my, you know, my movement, my idea, you know, just alldayhustlingdollars.com. Um, kind of started out with, Teaching financial wealth okay. through mental health. Gotcha, gotcha. Are, okay. is, that, is it for? Is that uh, just primarily for teens, or are you working with adults as well? I work with adults as well. I've um, worked with adults and teens. So okay. uh, to start out with family and friends, you know, helping them from getting the credit right to other resources that they need in the community to how to build a business, start a business. Uh, other little hustles, what are their talents, what are their skills, how to monetize their talents and skills, how to monetize social media. I got yeah. into social media real big for a little bit and learned how to do that. So now, um, you know, it's helping me to get a little bit more out there, more platforms, more faces, more places, you know, that I can get my brand out to and um, put a little bit more into it so I can get a little bit more out of it. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so mm -hmm. now, um, if somebody wanted to get in contact with you, how would would they reach you from the all day hustling dollars dot com um website or is it yeah they they can go to the website at www.alldayhustlingdollars.com dot dot com or they can hit me up on instagram at a d h d underscore a d h d um what's it called uh TikTok. Okay, <laughs> I'm starting okay, to try yeah. to get my TikTok together. It's ADHD comedy on there. So okay. um, when I I'm new to TikTok and uh, okay. I'm new to kind of um, I started doing comedy shows. Okay. Um, okay. Tell me a uh, how's how's that how's that going? Are you are, you know you down in the in the Greensboro area, right? Yeah, I'm in the Greensboro area. So um, have you have you um. Um, as far as like the comedy, you just started out with that, right? 
Uh, as far as the comedy shows, yeah, um, I started out doing comedy shows. Okay, and um, uh, it's been um, it was going good, you know, and my com comedians are doing real good. We're doing shows around the nation. Um, okay. well, mainly on the East Coast. Yeah, uh, yeah. from uh, DC down to Florida. Matter of fact, we have a show this Friday in Florida. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. Well, it sounds so, like you... Go ahead. Yeah, uh, with the comedians, All they right. were um, basically ran into one of my guys that I used to work with. He was a comic. He said, hey, man, I'm about to do a show. Just like two years ago. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do your show. Let me come see what you're doing. And he was like, all right. He said, you know, maybe you can sponsor me. He was like, you got all day hustling. I was like, you're right. I can sponsor you. I said, you can sponsor each other. Yeah. So I knew he needed help with the comedy shows and I need help with, you know, my brand getting out there. Yeah. So we're hand in hand. So, okay. um, you know, so I started doing comedy shows. And so we did the ADHD tour one in 2001. And then we did the ADHD tour in 2002. And I'm um, getting ready to get the ADHD three um, tour this year, okay. starting in um, September. Okay. So it, where, look out where, for the ADHD comedy tour in the city near you. Where's it going? Do you know where, as of yet where you're going to kick it off at? What's going to be the first, you know, you got any idea where you might start the, the first show at? Well, the first show is probably going to be in Greensboro at the okay. Artist Block. Um, probably like the third Thursday or third Wednesday in um, September. Okay. Okay. And that'll probably be the first show. All right. And maybe that, and it might be something I, I, I maybe I'd be able to swing down there, um, to, to kind of check it out, see what's going on, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can definitely come to Artist Block. It's right there on Gate City Boulevard. Okay, okay, and um, now as far as like uh, you do. Hold you, on one minute. Hold on. One okay. Minute. Okay, I'm back. All right. Um, as far as are you are you doing any DJing still? DJing, yeah, I still DJ. Um, I pretty much retired from DJing right now. I'm just kind of a controller. Um, <laughs> pretty much, I'm DJ for most of my life, and um, now I still have the equipment. Okay. So uh, I'm not trying to work hard per se with the right. DJing. But it's it's more of a PA system type. Now, if you're gonna serve me a plate and got, you know, <laughs> we're gonna have a good time, and ain't yeah. nobody trying to really dance hard, yo, I can play good music. Uh, pretty much like cookout music, gotcha. um, wedding reception music, things of that nature. Mm. But I'm not trying to be in the club DJing. I'm not trying to go, you know, <laughs> yeah. switching records every minute and a half. Uh, I'm not to keep that. up with the crowd. Yeah. Right, 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 right. I, I know a little something about that. I, you know, I, I told you I used to DJ up uh, up in Maryland with uh, with my boy Randy. Shout out to Randy if you you know watching. <laughs> but yeah, okay, okay. Um, we we had a had a like a real crazy setup until we finally got the Serato system. Beforehand, we just had two laptops and right. and, a, and a mixer in the middle. And we had everything running into the to the uh, to the mixer. Then we got yeah. these CDJs where we could actually put some CDs in and do a little scratching with the thing. Uh, some cats from New York came down and they they was looking. And they was like, "Can we come up on stage?" So they they came up there like, "Yo, what is going on? These cats." Are, <laughs> this was back when Napster was in. Uh -huh. they came from YouTube and Napster, but it was working. You know, we knew yeah. how to make the stuff cross faded and do all that stuff. And then you know, as as time progressed, you know, we had the speakers uh, system and everything. Um, you know, we finally got the Serato sound system and everything, and then we just kind of faded on out. You know, like we started, we started doing like uh, wedding receptions and mm -hmm. cookouts, and then we just kind of just Randy. Uh, he took another job and started driving trucks. Yeah, and right. um, I got back more into kind of doing dealing with the mental health work, um, working. You know, the uh, TDT clinician type things, and I moved back down to Virginia. That's around mm -hmm. by the time I met you. Okay, yeah, that's cool. 
Yeah, but, the DJing. Yeah, I, I still love. It. I still play with the music. I still. Matter of fact, I was in a music video this set, last Sunday. I went to a music video, and it was Brandon. All they hustling dollars in the music okay. video. One of my friends, um, Billy Adams, Mr. Adams. He uh, he getting ready to drop his album out. Okay, okay. I have to check. Have to check him out now. Mm -hmm. Since uh, you know, I'm doing the comics and drawing comic books and stuff like that. We were just talking. I'm gonna ask you. This is just gonna be an easy comic book question. Who's your your favorite? Superhero. Superman. Superman, okay, okay. Superman. Is there any particular reason? Or you just that's just kind of who you grew up with. Uh I guess you could say it's kind of how who I grew up with. Okay. Um if anybody remember like the Superman trilogies in the eighties when it came yeah. on HBO, uh it was it was phenomenal. Superman yeah. was phenomenal. You know what I mean? It was really something. Lex Luger, it was because it took it, it was probably like one of the first ones to take it from the comic book to yeah. the big screen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now we had like, you know, on the, the small screen, the 30 minute special with the, you know, Incredible yeah. Hulk and Batman. Yeah. But the big screen, that was the first one, you know, two hour, three hour movies, Superman. With, with Christopher Reeve. With Christopher Reeves, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Christopher Reeves. So it was like Superman was bigger than life. You got to watch. It, it was almost compared to like like Star Wars, you know? Yeah. It was yeah. real real theatrical, you know, even though it was a comic. It was, yeah. it was it, you know, so Superman was, he was unstoppable. He was invincible. You know? yeah. Except he had his kryptonite. Kryptonite, yeah. Yeah, the kryptonite, you know? So other than that, you know, Superman was like my favorite hero. Okay. Okay. Did you um did you get a chance to see any of the uh, Black Panther movies? Yeah, I seen some of the Black Panther movies. Okay, did you saw the first one. Yeah, I seen the first one. Okay, what what do you think? We go. I mean, we're going back a little bit, you know, because uh -huh. everybody, you know, that that's probably watching. They, you know, they're like, well, they probably want to know your feelings on the, the most recent one. But did you did you see the Wakanda Forever one? The most recent. I haven't seen the most recent. Okay, uh -huh. so we're gonna go. We're gonna we're gonna go with the one you did see. What did you? What was your feelings? What did you think about that one? The the. Uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, I liked it. Um, it had a lot of symbolism in it. A lot yeah. of things that you can, you know, we can take from. A lot of things, you know, that should be implemented in our society today. Yeah. Uh, morale, standards, integrity, um, dignity. Uh, tradition, honor, respect, yeah. um, all that played out in the movie. Yeah, you know, what I mean? so it, it had a lot of different dynamics, including a, a love story. You know, yeah. and that's pretty much um, how it goes. You know, I, I liked that it. it was pretty good. Okay, yeah, I, I think one of the main reasons I liked it is because for the first time, there's a serious, like, actual. Movie besides Blade, besides Blade, mm -hmm. but you know, and Blade was some good movies, but it was a serious like they actually put some serious money into it. So it, you know, usually we get like when we have superheroes that that look like you and me, it's usually a comedy, mm -hmm. you know, like media. Right. Nothing against Robert Townsend or anything, you know, or mm -hmm. or you know that uh, the movie that Will Smith was in. What was it? Uh. Can't even think of it. You know, he was he was that drunk superhero tearing up stuff. Hitchcock. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was Hitchcock. That was the name of it. So to see like the movie done well, a well written script, and um, you know, and somebody that that uh, you know melanated kids could look at and identify right. with. That was that was that was that was one of the, the highlights for me. Right. Um, well, yeah, you you uh, a little bit ago you showed me you, that you had some 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 comic books, so I, that means that, that that you you know at one point back in the day, I think everybody you know was was mm -hmm. was reading and collecting comics, and uh, so that's oh a good man, thing. yeah, comic books go way back with comics. Um, my uncle used to be a janitor right. uh, when I was in elementary school, and. They used to find all types of comic books, you know, from the kids and pencils, erasers, papers, all types of, you know, book bags and notebooks. And I would keep the comic books and read them. 
because um, I, I was also an artist. I like to draw. You know, okay. that was one of the things that we were, we were, you know, that was like one of the skills you had to have as a kid back in the day. Yeah. You, you know, you had to be able to draw. You had to be able to ride a wheelie on your bike. You oh, yeah. had to, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what it is. <laughs> Prerequisites to being a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. You know, uh, you had to be, you, you had to, you know, do the running race. You had yeah. to race against somebody. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you just had to get in the street and race somebody. Yeah. You had to see who's the Running down the street full blast. <laughs> full blast out the street. <laughs> That's one of the things you had to do. So drawing just came that. And I had a couple of cousins that was um, good at drawing too. You know, okay. one of them. Um, Carl Jones, you okay. may know him. Uh, he drew uh, with the Boondocks. He got a lot going on right now. Okay. Uh, he's pretty good with the drawing. And um, matter of fact, um, I used to copy his work when we was in elementary. That's how okay. good he was. I used to copy his stuff all the time. You know what I mean? So now he got, uh, what was it, uh, Afro Man? I mean, I forgot. Uh, with the, uh, Samuel Jackson. Afro Samurai. Afro Samurai, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. He got several um, productions that he have put out there um, other than uh, Boondocks. Uh, he got this new one, uh, Bubble Goose. Bubble Goose Jellies, I think that's the name of it. I can't, I think that's it. It's Bubble Goose Jellies. But um, that's his new one he's getting ready to produce out. Okay. I think it's going to be a pretty cool one. Well, yeah. Well, you think about getting into any more drawing or anything? Uh, uh, yeah, I've been um, trying to do some animated uh, series uh, with me and my old roommates. We had thought of a couple of things we were going to put together, uh, animated series. Uh, we actually had some drawings done, uh, collaborated with a couple of people, and uh, just been stagnated all day hustling. Still, something got to go. Yeah. You know, something got to move every day. You know, yeah. so I can keep residuals coming in. Yeah, that's a must. Mm -hmm. That's a must. Yeah, I'm try working on that, trying to get, you know, get out the matrix and stay out the matrix myself. So I'm, right. all, I'm all day hustling too. <laughs> yeah, hey, everybody in it. It's a, it's yeah. a mindset. It's nothing but a mindset. You know, sometimes I get lazy and stagnated and they're like, yo, I'm, I'm all day hustling dollars. It's my brand. I can't be. All day lazy. I know I'm all day hustling dollars. So I got to figure something out. So I need to figure out another residual income. Yeah. You know, because I like, like, even now, I've been doing it so long that, like, some days it'd be like, wow, I just got to check for $100, check for $60 off some residual yeah. stuff that I set up before. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Everything, everything counts. You know what I'm saying? Every, yeah, everything yeah. counts. That's, Everything counts. All day hustling dollars. But uh, yeah. well, I tell you what, Tito, I, I appreciate you taking the time out your day. Oh um, yeah, no problem, man. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I, I oh yeah, you wanted to, uh, the comedy. Um, yeah, okay. I've been working on my set, and I'm about to start being a com comedian myself. I've done acts for pointers from the comedians I done put on the road and on shows, uh, okay. like Juwan Cap. Uh, he's one of my comedians that I work with a lot. And uh, Kino Whitfield, uh, one of my comedians I work with a lot. And uh, Major Keys. And um, I've been asked them all, pointers on about doing comedy. And I just realized it ain't about being funny, it's about being entertaining. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, um, a comedian that wasn't necessarily, he was funny. Um, but he was informative and entertaining. You remember George Carlin? Yeah, definitely George Carlin. Yeah, he was funny, but a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of what he was saying was truth and informing, and it was entertaining. You know, right? So, yeah. and um, put a good show on. Yeah, so pretty yeah. much it is. You put and, a good uh, show on. So, I mean, I got some funny jokes too. I, I believe I can, you know. So okay. it's gonna be a new <laughs> venture of mine. All day hustling. I'm right in the pocket because. I've been dealing with comedians putting on shows and calling this comedian and learning the game and how it work and, you know, how to talk to the comedians and how much they get paid and how to talk to, you know, the club owners or the venue owners and how to work, you know, from the door to the bar to, you know, to the VIP, to the table, all that. Well, 
Did you um? I was gonna say on your on your on your TikTok that you're gonna have some comedy skits uh on there. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have comedy skits on there. So I mean, pretty much, I learned the TikTok uh algorithm. I just set that up a couple of months ago, and um, I had to get ten thousand followers. Mm -hmm. So I just started doing like reproducing other people's videos, and I got ten thousand followers fast. Okay. So once you get two thousand followers, you get mon monetized. Gotcha. You know. So now, um. I got to start doing stories so I can start getting paid for my stories. Okay. Um, and I kind of did the th same thing with Instagram, ADHD underscore ADHD. Um, once you get 10,000 followers on Instagram, you can get subscribers too. Okay. So now I'm putting stories on Instagram and on TikTok for my comedy career, which is going to lift ADHD, all the hustling dollars. Because that was the one of the things as well. Why I'm uh, partially why I'm becoming a comedian is that when I was doing the shows, I would tell the comedians, "Yo, I need y'all to advertise all the hustling dollars ADHD." Okay. But they would be so much into their skit, you know, yeah, they would yeah. forget about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I was like, "Well, I got to go up there and do it myself then." <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they say, "Hey, who can do it better than me?" You know, if I yeah, put the show I mean on, I'm definitely getting on the stage. Yeah. So do you know what you might uh what some of the some of the topics that you might uh I guess discuss in your in your in your sets? Like when you when you go up on stage, do you have any specific topics that you might Oh topics? Yeah, yeah um, like you might uh, touch I got, on. I got topless like um uh, Teslas, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm already, yeah, I got I'm already about to start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know what I'm saying? I, I, my homie, he got a brand new Tesla. He pulled up on me. You know what I mean? And I was like, bro, it's nice. Brand new. I think it was yeah. the P90 with the uh, ludicrous package on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, like 120. You know what I mean? And he had the, the, the receipt with him. He got you know, flexing on me. Can't yeah. flex. Show me the receipt. Hey, look what I paid. But then he had to add a. I think it was an extra twenty thousand for the FDS or something for okay. the auto drive. You know, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm just checking it out. Yeah, I paid cash for it. I was like, all right, cool. So he pulled up and the door come out. I'm like, oh man, that's cool though. He's like, get in. So I get in and it. And he said, watch your leg. And I'm like, I like. And the door started close. I like. I felt some type of way. I hopped back out. I was like, "Man, I'm a grown ass man. I can close my own damn door." <laughs> yeah, <God> damn. <laughs> I felt some type of way, man. But it was cool though. The yeah. Man, Tesla. He just, you know, he just said, "Yo, you no, know, um, you set the GPS where you want to go and everywhere." Okay. And then you did auto drive by itself. Wow. Only problem, you know, we, you know, I live downtown and it. There's some parts right out downtown that you shouldn't go that way. <laughs> and it was taking us that way. <laughs> so I'm like, looking uh -huh. at deep end, yo, it seemed to say, like, yo, don't go over there. It's a bunch of them over there. Over there. <laughs> yeah. Bustle left. You know, yeah. spin the block. <laughs> <laughs> you think y'all was going to, uh, you know, roll down there in the, in, the, in the Tesla, they going to get... Uh, so you basically the Tesla won't pay any attention to where you don't need to be going. It's just taking you to yeah, short term. right. Yeah, Tesla don't know this is the hood. No, you know what <laughs> it just be like turn yeah. left. Like, no, <laughs> no Tesla. No, <laughs> turn right, and it's crazy because the Tesla you get um. Ding! If you're not driving it appropriately to its standards, yeah, you have to okay. keep a, 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 a average of your driving record for you to get the auto drive. It's oh. not everybody can't get it. You have to have a driving record standing. I think it was at a 94. I think it's your grade have to be a 90. So okay. you get dinged from driving too close, speeding, pulling out in front of people, things of that nature. You know, you would be your score. Look, you, know like, I mean? you got a C plus, so you ain't gonna get auto drive. 
you can't get Donald Dry. You know what I mean? Yo, you got a C plus. You can't no matter how much money you got, you can't get it. <laughs> you like, yo, so but you, that's average. That's average. You know what I mean? No, you gotta have a, like I think it's above a ninety plus, you know what I mean, to get that auto drive. It's it's Look. I think we need to call Elon Musk and be like, look, man, what grading scale are you using? Because, see. <laughs> so, so what he does, if you want to get a good grade, yeah, you got to put it, you got to stay on, like, the autopilot. The autopilot is, like, so you got the FDS and you got the auto autopilot. Okay. So if you let it be on autopilot, then any mistakes is on the car. So it's not go against your record, but it helps okay. your driving record because it goes with the ratio, balance, and time, and the driving score. Okay. So that's how it works out. So you have to buy the FDS, which is like the real – it's like two different ones. One that come automatically, and then the, the F – I keep calling it FDS. I I, I, I think I'm mis, you know, mispronouncing or misinterpreting um, the uh, acronyms for that feature. But um, it's one that you have to pay for. I think it was like twenty thousand that my man had to pay for. Yeah. But it's not standard on the car. Well, speaking since I brought up Elon Musk, I did, and and we were talking about Tesla. Did you know that um he's supposed to be coming? He got his robot that's supposed to be coming out, and they call it Optimus. And that but what I was reading is supposed to come out in twenty twenty four, and I think these robots are going to be. Um, I think he said selling them for like for twenty thousand dollars, but they can go to the like grocery store. And based on what this article was saying, uh, you know, I guess I should have fact checked it and all this stuff. But I'm just gonna say what I read. Um, the 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 Optimus robot has like the actual Tesla GPS system in it, so it can actually, I guess, navigate and go where it needs to go. So you can send it to the grocery store and go to the grocery store. I guess it's gonna walk. I don't think it's gonna be driving, but that has a similar like GPS system in it that uh, like the like that's in the actual car. Um, so you know I'm getting ready. You know where I'm going. I'll, you might not know where I'm going with this, but anyway, I did a little uh, I guess not post, but a little video on comparing Elon Musk to Tony Stark. You know Tony Stark, oh, okay. like Iron Man. Yeah. You know? and, and so so we got we got um, we got Tony Stark. You know, he got all this money, like Iron Man. He's got these robots. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, is it, is Optimus going to turn into Ultron? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, it, that, it's realer than you think, actually. Yeah. Um, I, I live near North Carolina a and State University. Uh -huh. and, and they have a robot delivery system for food. So students can order food at wow. their dorm, and there's like a it's like a little wagon, and it has an antenna on it, and um, it's on four wheels, and it's, it's encapsulated. It has a capsule, okay. and you see them around campus, and, wow. you know, they just go, they'll come straight to your dorm, and you pick it up, you get your food out of it, and then you close it back, and then go back to um, where you got it from. From the, I guess you might have ordered it from either the calf. Or wherever they have delivery service from, okay. but you might see three or four of them just, just riding around camp. campus. Wow. Yeah, just riding on the sidewalk, just going down campus. Robot. So, what you saying? You know, yeah. robots going to the store. I can yeah. see that now. You know, especially with you having um where you can do the online pickup. Yeah. You know what I mean? And all they do, you send your robot up there. Yeah. And they, you know, the robot got a, a buggy or whatever, and they put it inside of it. And it come back home. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, they basically they already there then. So like I said, right. when they roll these things out, um, shoot, might be we might be living in a comic book here for real soon. Cause uh, again, yeah. I'm getting getting ready to go on some since like I said, this is comic orientated comic. Book okay. Art. So you um, I don't know if you saw on the news. Uh, was it the news? Well, they announced. Okay, I'm gonna ask you what you think about this. All right. So they did that little, uh, what you want to call it, tribunal sequestering that that guy about that about the aliens, right? And, uh, right. So you know they had a few Congress people up there, people up there. So they said like, um, oh, this guy's in the military. So they asked him, said, uh, 
So what about these? They call them UABs now, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, instead of UFOs. So I think I got that acronym right. So I, I guess both of us messing up with acronyms tonight. But anyway. Right. Okay. Uh, so the lady was like, so did you find a, you know, an aircraft? And the dude was like, yes, we did find an aircraft that was crashed. Was it made by humans? He was like, no, not, not no humans that uh, like that we know of on this planet have that technology. Um, were there any pilots? And he said, yes, there were pilots. And he was only answering what they asked. So they, then she goes, well, were the pilots human? He said, no, the pilots were not human. So admittedly, all on TV, you know, this was supposed to be broadcast, whatever. You, you can probably find excerpts of it on YouTube and other social media. But, you know, usually the post that, you know, something like that comes up, all the networks shut down and they got that whole thing on there, you know, it turned into like the, the OJ trial and stuff, you know, they, they, on mm -hmm. every station. they ain't put that on every station. So this man is just admitted on oath in front of a whole bunch of people and Congress people that they found some non-human pilots in a unearthly, non-created human aircraft. Mm -hmm. what do you think about that. Since we, you know, we ain't in any comic book, so now we got this stuff. Now we got aliens. Well, according to what they, what, what, what was said on there, we think about that, Tito. Ah, uh, I think it's just uncovering of stuff that's been here. I mean, there've been aliens. I think you know. Oh, I was right. They. They're just too intelligent to even think about us, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? I guess it's one of those situations why I bother. You know, I mean, right. many times we walk past ant hills and pay no exactly. And the ants, you know, in, in the big picture, if they're out somewhere, they don't. They don't even operate on where we at. You know what I'm saying? What, what's going on? So it's kind of like two worlds. Same place, and then you know, neither is acknowledging the presence of the other until you know, I guess you know, some well, the ants become a nuisance. And I guess sometimes uh, on this planet, people can become a nuisance. I don't know, they they were talking about one time that they, they, the whole nuclear things just shut down. So I guess you know, they, and nobody has the codes except for the people that's supposed to have it. So you know, there's some, some kind of outside, whatever. But the reason I bring that up is because, you know, like I said, we're talking about Elon Musk, Tony Starks, and then I don't know if you've mm -hmm. seen the recent thing with uh on Disney with Sam Jackson's Nick Fury. Well, they got these aliens on the planet called Skrulls. Skrulls. Uh -huh. They can cloak themselves as humans. And that's... What? Yeah, that's, and that's how Nick Fury actually moved up the echelon and got his job because he was using these scrolls they were working with him because they needed a planet to live on. And in the, in, the, in, the, in the meantime, while Captain Marvel was flying around trying to find these people a home planet, they were helping Sam Jackson like find imminent threats to the U.S. and do little stuff to like, because they could mask themselves as other people. So, like you're saying, if, if there are interactions, they're probably cloaking themselves and you know, I know I'm going way out in the left field, Tito, you know, with what I'm talking about. But nah, like, you good, man. Yeah, um, it's all good. I like talking about interesting subjects, stuff I don't talk about daily. Yeah. Like um, even now, I have switched from doing the uh with the kids in the mental health. I do now. I'm a substance abuse counselor. Okay. You know, so dealing with adults, adults and substance abuse counseling is also another thing. Okay. <laughs> they really be all day hustling the dollars. Yeah. <laughs> you, I, I'm pretty sure you probably hear and see some wild stuff with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they the real comic superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> they be doing some incredible stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. They like, yeah, you some of them be some superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> well, too, be, having been in the field myself, I definitely know what you're talking about, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Yeah. But um Elon Musk is definitely Tony Starks, though. I yeah. tell you that. He got the money, he's gonna build the robots. Yeah. Right now, he's he's literally unstoppable yeah. if he wanted to be. 
at this point. He, his he, designs, the things that he has at his disposal, yeah. he can shut down any country he wanted to. Yeah. Well, that's true. And that, we wouldn't be able to stop him from building the ultimate rockets. Well, yeah, because the dude had already built the thing to go up in the atmosphere now. It's, and it's, come it's, back down and land. Yeah. So I think they uh they about to they done shut that down though. The the the, the government done shut I believe they done talked to him and uh Richard Branson. They're like, look, y'all need to stop that. <laughs> they, they ain't took no more trips up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. They haven't took them, but he he, he he's there. He's right on yeah. the on the verge of um um so then he has the um uh, the what is it, the neural link? Yeah, well, I was just gonna say he got that and he trying to develop a way to put consciousness transfer that yeah. into uh into the that might that that's the neural link, ain't it? Uh, yeah, that's uh, the neural the link. Thing. Where you transfer consciousness into like a, I guess, a computerized program, and then transfer it back. And yeah, and transfer. Uh, basically, it's going to put a, a microchip in your skull. About uh, I think he said about a quarter of an inch mm -hmm. inside the skull. He said the skull is thicker than we think. Okay. Um, I guess well, a quarter of the thickness of the skull. He's going to put a, a chip yeah. in, and he's going to connect your nerve endings to the chip. So you'll be able to think faster, stimulate. Yeah. Everything will be done faster because the chip will be faster than the human will be. Wow. So he's, you know, he's advertising. It. Yeah, that help, you know, uh, paralegic, I mean, paraplegics, uh, yeah. people with spinal conditions, yeah. uh, you know, nervous issues, uh, things of that nature, autism. Um, but just like you know, it could develop a superhuman. Yeah, well, I think because it, on the road to doing that anyway, with the genetic tampering and stuff they're doing with that, and you you start you know combining that with the the AI computer stuff, and yeah, eventually, you know, I guess Captain Marvel or somebody gonna come out one of these labs somewhere. Right, yeah. right. They are. They are. Yeah, they are. They really well, are. Uh, a lot sooner than we think, you know. Yeah, I, I say, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. You know, yeah. I remember when they uh started first started talking about cloning and they was trying to make it illegal on um I guess most of the main countries and there was a doc that was like, I don't care what y'all say, I go buy me an island and I clone on that. Yeah. You know, so it's like and I would sell organs. It's like that's how I get rich. Well, and there's nothing they could, you know, not that we haven't heard of him. Or, yeah. But I, he's probably doing, he's probably been doing it for years. I'm pretty sure that they, it, on somewhere they got, on some of these bases somewhere, if they don't even have one uh, clone walk around the street, that there's a clone. Because, you know, they cloned their sheep back in 1984. Mm -hmm. I think it was 19. But they, there was a long time ago when they cloned their sheep. I think it was Bessie. Right. Anyway. Right, Bessie. So you know doggone well. If they didn't clone the sheep, they ain't waiting around. That they, they, right. they've been the clone of human being. Now, can I prove it? No, but come on, <laughs> you yeah. know, what I mean? come on. You know how many times you gotta do something before you get it on TV? I know that for people to remember something, you gotta do something. They gotta do. You gotta see it like twelve times or something. Mm -hmm. And saying they probably clone, 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 and say, "Okay, call the news reporters in now." Yeah, <laughs> that, that wasn't the first clone. That wasn't the yeah. first one. You know I mean? yeah, well, going back to that alien thing, he gonna do. There's like sort of later. Yeah, when it was the first time that we that we have interacted that you know of with, and he was like, "Well, uh, 1930s." So they've been they've been talking with yeah Roswell yeah um, they've been talking well, with these for a minute. I used to live in Arizona, uh, Area Fifty One. Okay, because you know I, I would like to know more about that. That's you can't even get close to there. I mean, you can ride along the gate, but if you go up to the gate, all of a sudden you'll see that white truck coming down the little <laughs> thing. What you doing? What you doing? Yep. Out here? <laughs> yep. Keep it moving. 
Mm -hmm. huh? Not playing. <laughs> Not playing. I mean, they was talking about storming Area 51. <laughs> nah. nah. They, they keep it on it's definitely not a good idea because it ain't going to. Mm, I was gonna make reference to something else. I ain't get political though. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, they ain't gonna storm that. Right, <laughs> right. Not come right. across that fence. It's gonna be a whole different outcome. Right, right, right. You're right. Yeah. So with the yeah, back to the Tony Stars thing. I've been seeing more people with the the jetpacks, yeah. the flying jetpacks. I've been seeing those. The two on the arms. I've been seeing the one up under the feet. Yeah. The one on the back. Uh, I even had a, I seen a jetpack race. Wow. It was like, you know, six people with the jetpacks racing in okay. a circle. See who finished first. Wow. I seen yeah. the one, I seen the one with the dude with the thing on the back and the one that has like, uh, there's like three things like they, mm -hmm. like where he's, and he can, he turns and tilts it like wherever he needs to go. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah. Those things are getting, you know, I keep thinking about the Jetsons. You yeah. know, everything gets smaller. Like they say, the first calculator took a whole floor on, on the New yeah. York yeah. building. Yeah. So, yeah, like George thinking, Jackson why? had like a little device he put on his back that was like this big, yeah. and, he, and he and he flew with it. Yeah, a little, a little, a little circle would come out. <laughs> right. Exactly. Hey, <laughs> never know. I mean, yeah. I, I, that's one of the thing about propulsion that they was uh, basically talking about with the drones. The you know how do you make the propulsion go outward or upward instead of downward? Because that's yeah. the problem. It, it it scatters everything up under it. Yeah. But if you can have if you can lift off without you know messing up debris up under you, yeah. then that would be the ultimate um, aerial. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you some crazy stuff. There's a dude. There's a guy in Africa that um had created um like a helicopter and a couple other machines that um, actually move, well, they were powered by, I guess, ions in the air or something like that. So mm -hmm. the, the, I see they starting to do, uh, there's a, some cats here in the States that kind of starting to do that, do some stuff with that too. But this dude actually had working helicopters, working all kinds of stuff. In, uh, but I haven't heard nothing else about it. He was supposed to be getting some investors. He couldn't find any investors, but then they, they were speaking that there's this African billionaire that was going to invest in um, the the machines that he is uh, um, like the the the, the way he he uh, I guess powers the machines. So I mean, these things, a lot of stuff that um, people are creating now. Um, you know, the the we don't necessarily need gasoline, but we know that's not going right. to be for that because. That's big money, oil and all that stuff. People, there can be a minute before they, uh, you know, get rid of that. But yeah, there's a lot of alternatives. There's some dude, I don't know how true it is. I don't know if you see him on Instagram. It's a brother on there mm -hmm. taking plastic and doing, running it through some kind of thing and turning it into gasoline. I don't know how true that is, but he said he, he can do it. Um, right. Yeah. See, but I, I've, I've come to the, you know, find, well, I really just find out, but sometimes. They'll buy it from you, buy the patent, and, and then destroy it. it. Yeah, put yeah. it in the file cabinet and put be like, you know what? We ain't got to worry about it. We ain't got to worry about it. Nobody can do this no more. So, but, so uh, I think that's what happens a lot of times, you know, yeah. especially like if, you, if you're making money off gasoline, you, yeah. <laughs> you're going to destroy any electrical files or anything like that. You know, you know, especially when Nikola Tesla, they didn't want him doing nothing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? When he lit up the World's Fair, I think it was 1901, he lit up the Chicago World Fair. Yeah. Get them street lights, man. They was like, he was amazing. And, uh, he was doing the electricity through the, I guess they call it the ether, so to speak. Mm -hmm. you right. Know. Uh, so that means you could just, I guess if you had a blender, you just turn it right, down. and that's that's yeah. what it was. He wanted to give the world free electricity, and Western House didn't want that. Yeah, well, no, they, they <laughs> agree. <laughs> I guess eventually we'll hit to a, a, I guess maybe one day a utopian point where greed won't be the uh, the uh, driving force because it'd be easy. Like at this point. Um, 
we could feed just about it. We should be able to feed everybody on the planet. Uh, speaking of that, I went and fact checked it. They had a thing at the UN where they were talking about um, is is having food a, a human right? Mm. And all the countries, with the exception of one country, and there were a few that abstained and a couple that weren't there, but everybody else voted unanimously, yes, food is a human right except for one country. Did you get a guess who that was? United States. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I was like, really? You know, I was like, come on. What? Come on. But yes, and somebody said it on this lady was talking about on Instagram. So I went back and I checked through and went in and get, got the little tally sheet from the UN thing. And sure enough, everything had a Y beside it, with the exception of the United States with a big N. No, not a, not mm -hmm. a human right. Capitalistic society. And I did a discussion earlier today with somebody about that and see they ain't even doing capitalism right because i i you know I'm, i i think capitalism if it were fair that that's that's a fine system but you can't have capitalism and have the people don't have access to the resources and don't know about the whole system i mean it's not like yeah if you put it out there in the library and people just don't read now that's the case with some things but then there are other things that you just ain't telling people. Right. So that's not really capitalism because capitalism is based on if you are given, everybody is given the same knowledge, you know, now, or has access to it. Mm -hmm. Put it that way, because ain't nobody going to give you nothing, but everybody has access to same knowledge and then what you do with that specific, that access is on you. So if you only read books up to here and you you know only make x amount of dollars because this is only the amount of this is this is the the extent of your knowledge of 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 um whatever's going on okay that's on you and if you decide not to read none of the books or get none of the information and you but you have to have access you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. everybody doesn't have access then we have another problem, not just information, because some of us are getting information, but you don't have access to the resources. All right. So, and you know, I'm not digging, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh was it bashing capitalism? Because I, I mean that's probably the best system, you know, to be fair to people, but you you know, in order for it to be fair to people. Like I said, it's certain things that have to have to be changed and corrected in order for it to be a a um in my opinion a um uh, um a fair system. Yeah, that's that's there's so many layers and layers and layers yeah. to that. It's just going back the psychology of you know, like um it's funny, I was talking to um Hispanic dude the other day. Yeah. And um just basically telling him like you guys just got here and you're piggybacking off what we're fighting for and you guys aren't fighting. Yeah. We are the only one we're fighting for every minority. Exactly. And nobody else is fighting but us. But we are you're piggybacking on us and you just got here. We've been, you know, like this, I was saying most of y'all population didn't get here to around the 80s. Yeah. Or, or even 80s and 90s. Like, y'all don't know about this. Y'all don't, y'all can't fathom what was happening in the 60s and the 50s and the 40s. Y'all can't fathom slavery. Y'all can't fathom Jim Crow. So what you see now is a result of those systems that have been in place for so long that you have no idea of. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was just, you know, just telling them, like, yo, you, you don't understand. Like, there was a time where if a black man had something that was better than a white man, the white man had a right to take it. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? And there was nothing he could do about it. Like, you can't even understand that concept. Yeah. 
So, but yeah, I'll tell you. Well, I'm going to tell you at this point, um, really glad that we reconnected, Tito. And um, I'm going to, you know, probably we're going to have to, I guess, go ahead and bring it to a close. I, oh, it's cool, man. I mean, I we really can talk appreciate forever. It. I can yeah, talk. I was going to say, I really appreciate you coming on. <laughs> I didn't even get the comics out, the comics I had. Yeah, I was going cool. to get you to sh 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 show that. Um, we can, so, Teenage Ninja Turtles. Let's see. I got some comics. I got an old yeah. Thor. So we got, yeah, we got Tito on here. He, he yeah. is in, in, and he got the comics. He's proving that, uh, What we're gonna have to do, oh. hey, we're gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have you on come on again, and uh, then we, we, we're gonna talk about comic collections. Oh, I got an old X man. I, th I got that one right there. I got that one too. Mm -hmm. I, you know what? I got a, I got the box over there, and I gotta figure out some of them. I might, I'll be able to tell you their uh, actual value. So but, yeah. I'm gonna tell, a, a tell dazzler, you, an old dazzler. I'm gonna tell you, hey, if you get a chance, mm -hmm. you get a chance if, you, if you get a chance, Tito, um, at a comic book store down that way, get um, get you some of these mylar bags. They the little, they the little plastic bags. They they about this big. You can store the comic books in, and then uh, right. they'll 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 keep a lot better in that, and you won't have to worry about the you know um. I guess any you know anything happening to them, or did the, the, they uh, a decrease in I guess valuation? And value. Yeah. I mean, I just been having them just in this shoebox. This shoebox cup oh, full of yeah. comic books. Let's see what's the Alpha fight. Oh, there's another. Oh, this is a thick X Men. So I hear my. Okay. Uh, so Hulk. I've seen a couple. Uh, of what a the thing! And the thing. Okay. Uh, X factor. So, okay, that's about it. The Thor. That's that what's was, up. That's what's up. Maybe, what maybe, maybe I'll get you to do a couple of. Can't be old like pictures to put in one of one of my books that uh that I'm getting ready to put out here soon. Yeah, that's the Thor right now. What what number? What issue is that? What number is that? Okay, one three three sixty-five. Okay. Okay. I got a, a Thor one upstairs. But um <laughs> so is any but, but before we before we shut it down. Is there anything you want to say? You want to like any? I mean, we can go back over the information in regards. If y'all want to check out uh, Tito on, uh, he's gonna have his comedy stuff on TikTok, and that's uh, yeah, ADHD you know, comedy on TikTok, ADHD underscore ADHD at uh, Instagram, alldayhustlingdollars.com. You know, hit me up. You know, the ADHD comedy. Subscribe on um, Instagram and on TikTok. I uh, got a show this weekend in Charlotte, well, actually, Kannapolis. Um, and Friday, there's a show in Jacksonville, Florida, but I haven't decided if I'm going yet or not. Okay, okay. But because that's a pretty drive, and I got to work Thursday. So it's like, you know, I'm going to drive and come back, and you know, because I got to be in Charlotte on Saturday. So, All right. What do we do? I don't know yet. Normally I do a little bit of editing and whatever, but since you got you got some shows coming up, I'm gonna try to go ahead and and uh, I'm gonna try to post it this evening or either tomorrow okay. morning, so that when people you know uh, when everybody when y'all get it when y'all y'all you you'll be getting this information about the shows on Saturday at least you know two days in advance. So if you try to get down there, um, you'll know about it and it won't be because normally I, um, we do do I try to post on Saturday. But uh -huh. do this one early so that um, you know um, anybody watching will, will know about the show on on Saturday and the possible one on Friday. So okay, 
All right, we're gonna have, uh, we're, I'm gonna have to have you on again, and then we, uh, you know, good, 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 good flow of topics and whatnot, and uh, you know. Oh man, yeah, if, we can talk for if days. You get a chance, if you get a chance, check out um uh, the second Wakanda movie, the, and because uh, I'd like to, you know, even though it's been out for a minute, I'd like to get your thoughts on it. And uh, oh yeah, we can definitely talk about. It. I, I definitely watch watch it. Um, <laughs> try to get it in probably this weekend. And the second thing is, have you seen? And I know I gotta, I gotta uh, have you seen? <laughs> have you seen uh, that Netflix thing? They cloned Tyrone. I have not seen it yet. I want to sit down <laughs> and take my out. time. It actually, was 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 decent. Check that one out. So that's gonna be. So next time Tito's on, we're gonna talk about they cloned Tyrone and his yeah. thoughts on Wakanda. That Wakanda. works for you. That works. All right, man. Again, appreciate it. And, hey, uh, thank you. And uh, we'll 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 do it. We're gonna do, we're gonna get together do some more stuff. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me on. The, thanks for having me on the podcast, man. I wish you enough respect, enough much respect, much success. Um, you know, just keep it pushing, man. I like the thing you're doing. I like the comedy. I mean, the comics, and uh, I like the wazoo. I like that too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Basically, this is this. Dad, you pointed it out. Basically. Um, you know, this is one guy on the scenes. Can't never could, would probably mm -hmm. won't. Can always will and always could. Mm -hmm. So that's what's up. But uh, yeah, man. Thanks again, and uh, we'll be seeing you again. Eyes will hear, ears will see. Thanks for feeding Manga out. <laughs>